Hold up, YouTube. If you didn't know already, the XFL is attempting a comeback. A major comeback that will start next season during the second year of the Alliance of American Football. So what does this mean for the AAF and the XFL? Well, it means that they'll be sharing a spring season, possibly for one year, possibly for more. But we do know one thing, this can't last forever. And I'm here to tell you why the Alliance of American Football will last and the XFL won't, with 10 major reasons to support my thoughts on the AAF and the XFL sharing the spring. And you're gonna wanna hear number one. Let's start it off with number 10. And at number 10, we have an odd reason. A reason because the AF actually almost failed. They lost a major investor, but Tom Dundon, owner of the Carolina Hurricanes, came in with $250 million to invest in this league. Yes, you heard me right, $250 million. That's more money than the money that was pulled out of the league, which is why you heard about players not being paid. Original investors pulled out their money. Tom Dundon not only came in and saved the day, but he made things a lot better for the Alliance. At number nine, we're gonna talk about Charlie Ebersole, the man who had the vision to create the Alliance of American Football. Ebersole has studied the game, studied other leagues, studied the NFL, and the XFL, the USFL, and the UFL. Multiple leagues with many incredible ideas, but an imperfect product. Charlie Ebersaw has now mastered the Spring Startup Football League and knows how to manage it to be successful. At number eight, we're gonna discuss on how the Alliance chose teams. How they are not only chosen in smaller markets for the most part, they were chosen in markets without professional football teams, and in the southern part of the United States, mainly because of the weather in the spring. The XFL, on the other hand, is targeting places that not only have a large city, but also already have a football team other than, of course, St. Louis. Are people in these big cities really interested in having football all year round? Are they going to be invested in their teams? There's only one way we can find out. We have to watch the XFL next season. Now, number seven, short. It's because the games are short, under two and a half hours. With less TV timeouts, less clock stoppages, less replays, and less challenges, the Alliance has figured out how to make the game fun and short. The games may be short, but they're nothing short of exciting. The Alliance has found ways to not only make the game fun with new rules like no kickoffs and going for two on extra points every single time, they've also implemented new systems and new technologies. For example, the camera angles are unique, different, and exciting. During challenges or reviewed plays, we get to see the skybox judges determine whether or not a play should stand, be reversed, or be confirmed. This is very exciting for the viewers. Lastly, we have the Sky Judge, a pretty self-explanatory judge in the sky who acts as a referee. He or she can determine whether a play should be called or should not be called. Basically taking out human air of refing because things like that happen in the NFL. At the halfway mark, at number five, I'm gonna talk more about the XFL and why I think it won't be successful, mainly because of Vince McMahon. Although he has made the WWE a powerhouse in professional wrestling, I don't know if he can do it in football. He's already failed once back in 2001 when he launched the first ever XFL. Does he have what it takes to do it again? I really don't know. I don't know if this league is made out of anger because he failed the first time and just wants to have another crack at it, or if he's 100% actually committed to making this a full-time spring football league. Next up, we're going to talk about the strong attendance, strong TV ratings, and mostly strong perception of quality of football, which is above all the most important thing for both of these leagues. Attendance numbers for games have been mostly positive. Only a couple teams struggle to get consistently strong attendance ratings. Teams like Orlando, 
Birmingham, and San Diego post strong numbers all year round, except for week four when there was inclement weather in most of the cities. AF TV ratings have been surprisingly strong, leading to networks such as TNT to broadcast games from their major channels. Also, the quality of football has been superb. Other than some complaints about wide receivers being rusty dropping passes and fumbled punt returns, the play has been pretty darn good. Many teams have had to change quarterbacks, and most of these offenses haven't been with each other for more than just a couple months, so the offenses are naturally going to be behind. The number three reason on why I think the AAF will be super successful is because of its structure, its actual structure. The AAF serves as a single entity, a corporation. All salaries and business decisions are made by the league for the teams so that the teams can have success. Oftentimes, owners can make bad business and logical decisions, which can hurt a team. At number two, we have an ideological difference between the AAF and the XFL. The Alliance knows its place. It's very self-aware. It knows that it has to act as a D-League or minor league for the NFL. There's no way to compete with the NFL. The XFL, on the other hand, is focused on becoming like the NFL becoming another huge league just in a different part of the season. They're doing this by signing huge name quarterbacks with lots of money and not letting players move to the NFL once they have signed the contract to be in the XFL. Unless that has changed by the time I make this video, that could actually hurt the XFL because players want to be in the NFL more than the XFL. And here it is, the number one reason why the Alliance will work and the XFL won't is because the Alliance is working with the National Football League, the biggest sports league in America. The Alliance has already had games on NFL Network exclusively all season, and Bill Polian has talked numerous times about how they are in talks with the NFL. Now what in talks means, well we don't know, we can only guess. We could guess that the NFL wants a stake in the Alliance they want to be more involved, or they want to buy the league outright and make it into an actual minor league for the NFL. If this happened, it would be game over. And who knows, it might. Now YouTube, those are my top 10 reasons on why the Alliance will beat out the XFL. But I want to hear your reasons. Make sure to comment your top 10 reasons in the comment section down below and also subscribe. Thanks for watching.